This is the resort of Engelberg in the heart of the Swiss Alps. Hundreds of thousands of visitors come here every year to ski, hike and relax amid some of the most stunning mountain scenery in the world. These Indian tourists have come to Engelberg to see snow for the first time. For many it may also be the last time because the snow and ice that make this one of the most iconic and photographed places on earth is melting fast. Christoph Bizig is in charge of peace preparation and mountain rescue on the Titlis resort that rises 2,000 meters above Engelberg. We are having shorter seasons up here. We have to fight to uh, be able to keep the ski season earlier open. In the olden days we are started in October and even before 10 years ago the people still been skiing all year round up here. We stopped that about seven years ago. We carried on with a little uh, terrain park for snowboarders in a small area, but we stopped that too because it just gets too slushy. The, uh, the other thing is uh, there hasn't been much, not enough snow fallen over the winters, and that's why the reason we stopped uh, skiing and snowboarding for the summer. Less snowfall is not only bad news for skiers who have to climb higher and higher in search of pistes, it's bad news for the Alpine economy, which depends on tourism. 60 to 80 million tourists descend on the Alps every year, mainly for skiing holidays. But lack of snow could lead to the closure of dozens of low-lying resorts, such as Megève in France and Kitzbühel in Austria. Here in Engelberg, piste operators have covered part of the glacier in a white fleece to stop it melting in summer. But with less snow and warmer temperatures, the rest of the glacier will continue to retreat. When I started here, 15 years ago, we had about 20 meters high, big Xerox, instead of continually breaking down on those days. In the last 15 till 17 years, the whole glacier has been retreating uh, to about 200 meters further up the hill. Also, it's uh, incredible. One of the major attractions on Mount Titlis is this ice cave, carved out of a glacier 3,000 meters above sea level. But as the glacier retreats, cracks are beginning to appear on the cave ceilings. For us, it is a really sad story to see it go so rapidly going down. Because we're living off it, we love the glacier. In a way, it's sort of, uh, even if you look up from the valley, you see it in the summertime, it's white, a white cap and a, and a mountain, sort of, if you, don't, if you don't see it anymore, it's a big loss for the mountain region, for, for, uh, for areas which really live off tourism. It's a similar story of glacial retreat across the Alps. This is the Steingletscher glacier on the other side of Mount Titlis. It used to occupy the whole of this valley. Now a lake has formed where the glacier's snout used to be. Michael Zemp, a glaciologist at the University of Zurich, is the author of a major study on the effects of climate change on alpine glaciers. The report doesn't make the happy reading. The mean annual thickness loss of glaciers after the end of the so-called Little Ice Age, around 1850, was about 25 centimeters. Um, since the 1980s, um, glaciers in the European Alps lost about 75 centimeters per year. Since 2000, glaciers lost about one meter of ice thickness each year. And in the year 2003, when we had this extreme heat wave in summer, glaciers in the Alps lost about 2.5 meters in one single year. Glaciers are bellwethers of climate change and even a small temperature increase can have devastating results. In the European Alps we lost about 50 percent of the glacier cover since the end of so-called Little Ice Age around 1850 and the temperature increase since then was about 1 to 1.5 degrees Celsius in the Alps. And when we imagine now that the scenarios range between a further increase in temperature by another degree up to another six degrees Celsius by the end of this century, uh, then we can imagine what this would mean. The Alps are already warming three times faster than the rest of the globe and Dr. Zemp calculates that a three degree increase in temperature could lead to the loss of 80 percent of alpine glacier cover by the end of the century resulting in more floods and landslides in spring and less water for Switzerland's agriculture and energy needs in summer. Higher temperatures could also melt the permafrost many pylons and cable car supports are embedded in, leading to higher repair and insurance costs. 
sea levels have already risen by 20 centimeters and could mount by as much as 80 centimeters by the end of the century, and by up to 7 meters if the Greenland ice sheet melts. This is what would happen to England, Belgium and the Netherlands without flood protection, and this is the effect of a 1 and 8 meter rise in sea levels. Melting of ice, uh, increasing sea levels, um, is also a long-term threat which will physically change the landscape of Europe and the landscape of the world. Um, if Greenland melts, um, a uh, sea level rise of up to 7 meter is being predicted, is being forecasted. You cannot adapt to that one. You can build dikes a little bit higher um, to accommodate 50 centimeter, probably 1 meter sea level at maximum in the Netherlands and somewhere. But 7 meter, you can't adapt to. You have to evacuate people. You have to evacuate cities like Cairo, like New York, like London, like Hamburg, like Rome. Too much water is a fantasy for farmers in the Murcia area of southern Spain, which is one of Europe's hottest and driest regions. Without irrigation, this area would be a desert. But to keep such regions fertile, almost 90% of Spain's freshwater resources are needed. Farmers such as Antonio Moreno Soriano are already struggling with harsh climatic conditions. Global warming will only make matters worse. Preocupa muchísimo el cambio climático. Estamos encontrando que en los últimos años, además de que llueve mucho menos y por tanto tenemos mucha menos agua, y ya tenemos imágenes de lo que, de, 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 qué es lo que ocurre cuando, hay, cuando no hay agua, cuando no existe agua en esta zona, nos estamos encontrando con un problema añadido, y es que hay cambios mmm, brutales que están afectando muchísimo a, a los frutales y a la arbolea. Murcia is often referred to as la huerta de Europa. This is where much of the continent's fresh fruit and vegetables come from. But with studies predicting up to 40% less rainfall a year in Spain, how long will this region remain Europe's orchard? This area of Spain is booming. A decade ago there were two golf courses. Now 70 are planned. 800,000 second homes have been built in recent years to cater for northern Europeans in search of more clement weather. The result is that farmers are often in direct conflict with the owners of hotels, golf courses and holiday homes for precious water resources. The migration of tens of millions of northern Europeans to the Mediterranean coast is the biggest annual movement of people on the planet. Here in the mega resort of Benidorm on Spain's southeast coast, tourists arrive all year round to soak up the sun. But with annual average temperatures in this part of the world expected to rise by up to five degrees by the end of the century, Will this corner of Europe become too hot for them? This is a map produced for the EU showing the conditions for summer tourism in Europe at present. The red and brown parts are very good or excellent for tourism, while the blue parts are less attractive. The next map shows the projection for the end of the century, based on a global 3.4 degree increase in temperatures during this century. Note how the North Sea and Baltic area become much more appealing to holidaymakers, while the Mediterranean becomes less enticing. Climate change will have more sinister effects than changing holiday patterns. In Europe, more than 70,000 people died prematurely during the 2003 heat wave, and increased temperatures could lead to thousands more deaths a year in southern Europe. Forest fires will also become more frequent across large swathes of the continent, and many bird and animal species will become extinct as natural habitats are wiped out. Climate change will have, in the view of the real experts, uh, a tremendous negative impact on biodiversity, uh, reducing it by, they say, approximately 30 percent. This is a, a catastrophe of major proportions. Poor countries will suffer the most from climate change as soaring temperatures, melting glaciers and falling rainfall leads to lower crop yields, less drinking water and greater starvation. The prospect of tens of millions of environmental refugees escaping harsh climatic conditions is no longer the realm of sci-fi films. It's for real. Many are already adapting to the effects of climate change. In the Danube Basin between Vienna and Bratislava, authorities are removing artificial boulders to allow the river to flood naturally, creating a wildlife-rich natural park and preventing flooding in cities. And in the Murcia region of Spain, farmers irrigate their crops using a computerized water card that's helped reduce water consumption by 30%. The European Commission believes the quicker we adapt to climate change, the better. The cost of acting today is significantly less than it is to, uh, to clean up tomorrow. In our calculation, we can actually act uh, against climate change at a very small cost. Uh, to our economy. Global warming is a fact. 
Temperatures have already risen by 0.76 degrees since the Industrial Revolution and are projected to rise further by 1.8 to 4 degrees by the end of the century. Deep cuts in greenhouse gas emissions are needed urgently to prevent a climate catastrophe, but this will not solve the problem in the short term. The negative effects of global warming will be felt for centuries due to the inherent inertia in the climate system. The real question is no longer how to stop the damage, but how to limit it. The most cost-effective way to do this is to act now rather than later.